Um, so this is the session to learn about the computer science and cybersecurity programs in the Lane Department of Computer Science and Electrical Engineering at West Virginia University. My name is Brian Powell. I am a computer science professor here in the department, and I'm joined by Dr. Tom Devine. And Tom uh, teaches some computer science stuff, but also in our cybersecurity program. And we have a current student in our department, Miriam. So Miriam is a double major in electrical engineering and computer engineering, which uh, with that double major, especially on the computer engineering side, overlaps uh, a good bit with our CS program. Uh, so before we uh, go ahead and get started, um, I guess just want to quickly check in if anybody had any questions or anything. If you do have any questions throughout, go ahead and please feel free to chat. And uh, one of us will try to either respond back to you via chat or um, we'll try to talk about it here. So kind of just to give you a little bit of an introduction, our department here, Computer Science Electrical Engineering, brings together a variety of related disciplines. So basically what we're dealing deals with computers and electrical things. Um, our core, as you kind of guess from the name, is computer science and electrical engineering. But there's a lot of other pieces that fit in with it. Computer engineering is kind of uh, in between computer science, which is software, and electrical engineering, which is all hardware. Computer engineering is basically computer hardware. Uh, we also have a new cybersecurity program that we'll be talking about here during the session. And then we also have a program that deals with biometrics. So pretty much any sort of technology that you're seeing today, it has something to do with stuff that we do here in CSEE. You know, if you go through and drive a car, there's a computer inside that car that goes and controls stuff. Even a lot of light switches nowadays, um, I've got some ones at home that are wirelessly controllable. They've got computers inside of them. Um, to going through and taking a look at solutions for solar and wind energy and being able to produce that and be able to distribute that to getting into robotics, just about anything that you're dealing with nowadays has computer or electrical components in it in some fashion or another. And that's the type of stuff that we deal with here in the lane department. So in terms of you know who exactly makes up the lane department, there's about 30 faculty members here in our program. And five of the faculty members that we have are recipients of the National Science Foundation's Career Awards. These are very prestigious awards that are given out to young faculty in recognition of the strong uh, research and productivity that they've shown in their first years as faculty and with the expectation and it's funding to help them go through and support the rest of their career as they go through and develop and launch their research programs. Five of our faculty members are also fellows of the IEEE, which is a professional society for people in computer science and electrical engineering. IEEE is an international organization, covers the entire world. To be a fellow in the IEEE, you have to have made significant contributions that are recognized by people working in academia and industry to the field that you actually specialize in. So having five people in for the fellows program in IEEE is pretty significant. We have faculty in the department that cover all sorts of different programs um, and specialty areas within those. So we have people who go through and work with stuff like biometrics, going through and doing computer vision type things, being able to go through and um, detect faces and things in video and stuff like that. Uh, people who do software engineering and cybersecurity. I do some work with data analytics. We have people who go through and develop cell phone technology, being able to actually go through and effectively and efficiently communicate data over the radio waves. Lots of people in our department who are well respected in their different fields. So in addition to our 30 faculty, we have about 480 undergraduate students, and that would be people who are at WVU sophomores, juniors and seniors. You get accepted into the department normally as a sophomore. You're in the freshman engineering program as part of the first year. We are on WVU's Evansdale campus in Morgantown. Right now, I'm actually sitting in my office in the Advanced Engineering Research Building, which is about four years old. It's a new building here on campus. Um, we also have some facilities in other buildings here on Evansdale campus and a little bit downtown. Uh, but you know, being in new buildings, we have nice new facilities that we're able to go through and teach our classes in and our labs in and conduct research in. So now that you kind of heard a little spiel about the introduction to the department, I'm going to talk a little bit about computer science because that's the field that I'm in. 
So basically computer science is where we go through and develop technology and write code to go through and control what computers do. There's a lot of different specialties inside of computer science, depending on what you're interested in. You know, a lot of people go and get computer science degrees because they want to go and be software developers. But if you're interested in going through in research or you're interested in specializing as a software developer, you can go through and take a look at things like computer vision, where you're going through and trying to, as you can kind of see with our graphic down here, go through and find faces and things. We have courses in going through and doing game development. If you want to go through and write computer games or go through and work with virtual rec, uh, reality technology. Uh, security, especially cybersecurity, is a growing field. And in fact, up until recently, cybersecurity was actually part of our computer science degree. It's only pretty within about the last two years that it's become its own separate degree program. We also have people who go through and work with data analytics. Big data has become really a huge growth area with being able to gather all of the information that we get from the internet. Just there's mounds of data. And if we can go through and analyze that, there's a lot of important trends and things that we can go through and identify. That's a big part of what we do in computer science nowadays. Um, software engineering also is an important area, and that really gets to reliable software design. So actually, one of the things that our software engineering program does here is it works with NASA's IV and V facility that's in the area to go through and help make sure that the software that NASA goes and sends on its robots out in the space actually is properly designed and is, is going to work as intended when we go and send things to Mars. Computer science is a really high growth area for jobs, really pretty much everything in our department is. Um, but there's plenty of job opportunities with computer science. Pretty much if there's any part of the country or any part of the world that you want to live in with a CS degree, you can go find a high paying job there. There's a lot of opportunities here locally as well. If you're from West Virginia or from the region, if you want to stay nearby, there's plenty of companies that are going to go and hire you here too. And we'll talk about them a little bit more at the end. But as you can see here, there are millions of jobs within the field. And there's some pretty nice salaries coming out here for people who are going through and working in these areas. And it's really, it's a growth area there. You're always going to need computer programmers. You're always going to need people to go through and do the research in computer technology, because that's what really powers our future. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to hand it off to Tom here to talk a little bit about cybersecurity. Thanks, Brian. Uh, can I get it? Can I get people to type in the chat and see where everybody's from? Uh, I feel very impersonal looking at the computer screen. It's nice to, to actually hear from some people. We got somebody from Maryland out there, Lancaster. Hey, my wife's from Harrisburg. Got some Delawares. Okay, no West Virginians. And the, there's a Morgan town. There's a couple. Okay, excellent, excellent. Um, so it, it's my honor and pleasure to be here to talk to you guys today about some cybersecurity opportunities that are going on uh, right now here at WVU and in the country uh, in general. So cybersecurity, in case you're wondering, it's one of the fastest growing fields um that we have right now and everyone that i talk to in industry uh we, we just had a guest speaker come for our cyber wvu club from um from the department of defense and one of the things that they all say when i talk to these people is that there's a uh, a massive demand for uh trained cybersecurity professionals and one of the problems that they have with people who get into cybersecurity so this is what this means in general is just, uh, it's like a conglomerate. Uh, it's any time that we're trying to secure a protected system or protect a system from an external attacker, or from an inside attacker as well, that's a big threat. So, I, I mean, I'm sure you guys have gotten phishing and spam emails, right? Everybody's probably been uh, subject to some exposure where a company's leaked their credential information. So uh, in the cybersecurity department, we're trying to train professionals uh, to handle these events and to make sure this kind of stuff doesn't happen and to try and protect some of the uh, the infrastructure of uh, the country or any of the uh, uh, cyber systems. So what they say uh, and what this gentleman was talking about is there's this huge gap. Uh, we have so many jobs that are open right now and the amount of people that are qualified to fill them are very, very few. So we really, really need more cybersecurity professionals. This is the kind of field, if you go into this, 
Um, I mean, it's difficult, it's hard, uh, because you're trying to patch all the possible holes, right? And an attacker just needs one tiny chink in the armor to be able to get through. So it, it's a tough job, but if you do it and you become qualified, uh, you, you got job security basically for life. Um, these jobs aren't going anywhere. Uh, they, they're well-paying, uh, and, and there's such a demand right now because there's so, like, we're in a current state of warfare um, with other countries, with uh, groups within our own country, of people trying to steal information or um, hijack resources. So uh, what we need are people to help us fight this battle uh, that are trained and are actually able to do this stuff. Some of the, uh, the job titles you might see there um, are, are potential things you could do with a cybersecurity degree. I have a former student who's a penetration tester. So penetration testing is what we call a red team, blue team. And the red team tries to attack and enter the system. Uh, so they'll, they will actively try to hack and also physically try to gain entrance um, to a system like print fake badges and try to walk into a place, carry a ladder, and people will just let you into secure uh, areas. Um, but also, you know, trying to, to penetrate their systems remotely. So one of the things that we do, uh, speaking of pen testing, is a Mac CDC competition with our Cyber WVU Club. And this competition um, was remote this year, which is unfortunate, but uh, we'll, we'll set up machines, uh, pre-built machines, and then the, uh, the collegiate team, right, our students have to act like the blue team and they're trying to defend this system that they're put into while they're constantly being attacked by professional uh, red team penetration testers who will do things like put pop-up windows and talk smack on them uh, in the middle of their, their sessions uh, while you're trying to like kick everybody out and shut everything down. It's, it's a pretty intense competition. Uh, and we just did that a couple weekends ago. It was a lot of fun. Um, other big jobs in the area we have. So, I mean, even like in West Virginia, there are, as of today, 1,138 job openings in cybersecurity. These are open positions waiting for people to fill them. Uh, we had some people, Pennsylvania's got 16,000 open positions right now. Maryland has 22,000 open positions right now. Uh, there's just so many jobs available uh, doing so many different things um, that we really need qualified people. And one of the problems that we get is that people will enter the industry uh, or I hear this from industry people, uh, and and they'll have some knowledge and they'll have some certifications, but they don't actually know what they're doing. So they say that they're certified, but not qualified. So at WVU, we focus on making qualified and certified uh, cybersecurity professionals. That means we do a lot of hands-on training, right? So we get your fingers dirty on the keyboard. Uh, we do password cracking, uh, buffer overflow attacks, SQL injections, cross-site scripting. Uh, we do all kinds of different attacks and defenses, uh, setting up systems and uh, writing and actually developing secure software that, uh, you know, we want you to be ready when you graduate to be able to be, you know, a productive member uh, of the cybersecurity force. I can literally talk about this for like five hours. So I don't know how much I should uh, say here. Uh, how much time do we have? We've got about another 15 minutes here before we need to wrap up. Okay. Uh, well, just tell me when to shut up and I'll just go until then. Uh, so some of the opportunities that we're working with right now, uh, WVU has a really strong relationship with NASA. Brian mentioned that. So one of the things that I have some uh, undergrad students working on right now is uh, reverse engineering um, executable bytecode to see if we can find cybersecurity vulnerabilities that are hidden inside of it. So uh, the idea is that, and NASA asked for this research um, because they end up getting all this uh, uh, commercial off the shelf software and they would like to maybe use it, but maybe the people that developed it don't really think about security in the way that NASA thinks about security, right? Because there's a lot of people that write software now. Um, and if the source code isn't available, then how are we supposed to know if there are vulnerabilities in that code? So we're using some tools, some of them created by the NSA and some by like uh, antivirus software companies like Avast. And we're taking the bytecode 
and reverse engineering it to get the source code and then analyzing that source code with other tools to see if there are any cybersecurity vulnerabilities in it. And uh, the, I just had a meeting with NASA on uh, Wednesday and they're really excited about this research. Uh, and so are actually some of the companies that gave me uh, academic license to use their software to do this research uh, also want to share their research with us and, and uh, see our results and see how it goes. Uh, so lots of opportunities in the area. So in the, like the Virginia or the Maryland area, uh, and even around here, there's a lot of defense contracting. So uh, computer science and cybersecurity go hand in hand. Um, most of the software developers uh, that are doing some sort of contract for the DOD or, or whoever that's a government contract, they're going to require you to get a security certification anyway. And they really like it when you have a background in cybersecurity because um, a lot of CS programs ignore cybersecurity, which is, which is a really, I mean, this is the reason that we have so many vulnerabilities that exist in all the code that gets created now, um, because people aren't aware, like they'll just use an unsafe function because they've never been taught any better. Um, and that opens up this huge vulnerability. And then we have some kind of massive data breach or uh, a system getting corrupted and people uh, getting inside it somewhere they shouldn't be. Uh, which is happening every day, right? So I use, uh, I have a Twitter feed that I use to disseminate uh, current events, right? So we're always talking about current events in the classroom. I call it our, our uh, threat intelligence research. You need to be up on what's going on right now. Uh, so we talk a lot about current events um, and some of the stuff that's going on in the world is just insane. I've never had to look more than uh, two minutes to find some massive breach. Uh, so can we, is this the last slide I have here? Um, yes, for okay. the, right now for cybersecurity. Okay, so again, uh, just to wrap up, there's a, there's a lot of exciting opportunities. We really need you here uh, now uh, working in this field. We need to make professionals to protect uh, our cyber infrastructure uh, in this country. So, so you know, if you come here, uh, you'll definitely have to go through me to get out of the program, and I look forward to meeting you all. Um, so we'll let this continue. So Miriam's going to talk with us a little bit about some of the opportunities for student organizations uh, that students can participate here at WVU. Hey guys, as uh, Dr. Powell just introduced me, I'm Miriam Damasi. I'm a senior electrical computer engineering student at WVU. And WVU, especially the Lane Department, has a lot of student organizations, as you can see here. IEEE is an organization I've been part of. They hold conferences. There's different competitions, like a sumo bot competition or a, a brown bag competition where you get different circuit components and have to build things. There's ethics competitions. There's teaching competitions, teaching students about a computer science and electrical engineering. There's the Association for Computer Machinery as well. There's a lot of association for a women in engineering as well. There's amateur radio clubs. There's different honors societies. And as Dr. Devine has mentioned earlier, there's Cyber WVU who does a lot of the collegiate cyber defense competitions and different hacking competitions. Whatever your major is within uh, the Lane Department, there's a professional society for you to join, as well as probably a special interest group like Amateur Radio Club or the Video Game Development Club as well. I'm actually just going to pop in because I'm faculty advisor for IEEE. So actually right now as we speak, they are having a soldering workshop for students. Um, and this is part of a, a couple series that they're, they're going to be doing this spring where they're going to build uh, little custom keyboards to use for gaming. Uh, so IEEE likes to have a lot of different events and projects like that, kind of as Miriam was saying. So what makes WVU unique? I think what makes us the most unique is that there's a lot of outside of the classroom competition besides just clubs and student orgs. There's these competitions. I personally am on the robotics team at WVU and have been for the past two years. So as you can see, we've won a lot of the NASA challenges. We can be in the University Rover Challenge as well each year. And there's a lot of opportunity for electrical engineering, computer engineering, computer science and robotics. There's EcoCar where we placed second place in 2018. If you're interested in connected vehicles, automated vehicles, changing a car from gas to electric, there's a lot of coding and cybersecurity, computer science, electrical engineering that goes on 
at that team too. And then again, the WVU cyber team, if you're interested in learning how to protect and secure systems, there's also a lot of competitions for you. And also just at the bottom, there's the tutoring center. If you're ever struggling in your classes, there's a tutor for all the sophomore and some of the junior level courses that, free, that is free at WVU. I'm actually one of those tutors. And so there's a lot of people like me who just wanna see you and help you succeed when you're here as well. Definitely. So um, one of the things that we have as an advantage here at WVU compared to a lot of other schools is that since we are an R1 research institution with a full graduate program, we have a lot of opportunities for students to get involved in the research that our faculty and graduate students are doing while they're still undergrads. So that's a pretty common that we have a lot of students here who help go through and participate in different capacities with programs. Um, sometimes, you know, it, it kind of varies depending on what sort of research opportunity you're interested in, but we have a lot of faculty who are working on different projects where students can, you know, as sometimes even as freshmen can get plugged in. Um, so, for example, we do a lot of biometrics research here. Um, one of the things that we need in order to make that research work is we have to have biometrics data. We need, you know, people's fingerprints and faces and sometimes even scans of the iris. Uh, we have undergraduate students who help us go through and handle data collection for that. Uh, Tom was talking a little bit about some of the research where he's plugging in uh, some undergraduate students to go through and help with there. Uh, we're doing work with trying to go through and have smart and connected homes, especially trying to be able to support um, older people being able to remain in their homes, um, not necessarily have to go to an assisted living facility. We're doing research with, on ways that we can go through and do that, things with robotics. Um, we even have some research opportunities that students can plug into based on projects from our alumni. So SciGlass is a company that's based here in Morgantown. It was founded by a, a Michael Moorhead, who went through and got his computer science degrees here from WVU. And he, with one of our faculty in the department, um, have created this platform to be able to go through and visualize uh, scientific data. So you can go through and explore going through and looking at different cells and things like that and be able to really get a using virtual reality you have the headset on be able to go through and see what's going on actually with that data and be able to go through and record and annotate so you can kind of share your explanations with others they have opportunities for undergraduate students to come and perform research um, there's a lot of ways that you know if you're interested you can go through and get involved you don't have to be a graduate student to do research if you're at wvu some students are also interested in study abroad, and Miriam took advantage of that. She's going to talk a little bit about what opportunities we have there. Yeah, so when I was a freshman, I got the opportunity to study abroad at the Royal University for Women in Bahrain. So I got to spend time uh, in the Middle East and learn about their culture, and WVU actually has um, an engineering school in Bahrain as well. So I got to tour that and spend time and it was a really great opportunity. I strongly advise anyone who's interested in study abroad to look into it at WVU. The advisors want to work with you to support you and let that be an opportunity for you. We've really been trying to go through and cultivate relationships with other universities across the planet for people who are interested in going through and doing study abroad. Um, if you're thinking about doing it, a uh, good time is generally kind of sophomore and junior year. That tends to give you the most flexibility with your schedule in, in terms of being able to take courses internationally or and be able to bring them back to our curriculum here at WVU. We do have a scholarship that was funded by uh, alumni uh, from our department, uh, Sarah Suleman. Um, and it's named actually after Will Cooley, who's a retired faculty member in the department, um, that we can go through and help provide support for students in CSEE who are interested in participating in study abroad. We also have a lot of other scholarship opportunities for students here in the department. So at uh, between Statler College scholarships and ones that are specific to the Lane Department, there's uh, we had 51 students in 2019 who went and received scholarships from those specific programs. And we have a couple new opportunities that in the last year we've launched. Uh, Mike Manley, who owns a company called Software Systems Incorporated here in Morgantown, donated half a million dollars to fund scholarships for students in CSEE. We also currently have a grant from the National Science Foundation for students who are in the cybersecurity major or who are doing um, computer science with a cybersecurity area of emphasis that will go through and pay $5,000 uh, a year and you can have it for up to four years. 
So that's a really great opportunity to help pay for your education. And there's not um, any sort of commitment for work or anything after the fact. We also do have programs available through like the Department of Defense where they will go through and give very generous scholarships with stipends if you commit to working for DOD afterwards. Um, but this NSF one, there's, there's no commitment to that. And one of the things that you know most people are going to college for is they want to get a job when they're done. Uh, we have a lot of employers that we have graduates working for both locally and throughout the country, and in some cases internationally. Um, there's a pretty good a cluster of businesses here within North Central West Virginia between Morgantown, Fairmont, and Clarksburg uh, that hire a lot of our graduates. Many of them are government or defense contractors. So, um, you know, we have a lot of people who go through and work for, uh, end up doing work that supports federal government or state governments. I know several people who are at some contractors in the area doing that locally. We have some startups that have spun off from some of our research here, like SciGlass. But we also have people who go out and work for large developers. I know students that are going through and working for Microsoft and Apple now, working for Google has a facility up in Pittsburgh that hires a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of opportunities. Um, actually, one thing that's kind of neat is Realtor.com uh, is actually based here in Morgantown. They're all their operations for their website. So it's actually a, a company that started here in Morgantown with some of our graduates. Uh, that got acquired uh, and is now owned by Realtor.com. So if you're looking for a house, uh, all the, the tools to support that were developed here with uh, WVU graduates. Uh, a lot of people also do think about going on to graduate school after they go and get their bachelor's degree. We have master's and PhD programs here at WVU. And actually, uh, Tom and I are both graduates of our the PhD program here in computer science from WVU. Uh, but we also have a lot of people who go on to other schools uh, we have people who've gone to very prestigious programs in computer science, including Carnegie Mellon and Georgia Tech. Um, there's a lot of opportunities that if you're looking at going to graduate school, um, you know, we've had our graduates stay here, but also we have a lot of graduates who go elsewhere and do very well in very well regarded, very competitive programs. Um, so that's kind of what we have here for our talk, and we're at 1.15 right now, so I know a lot of you need to go uh, head off to the next session, which starts in about five minutes, but um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to go ahead and stick around. Um, we can chat with you. Um, also, let me go ahead and put the earlier slide back up where we had everybody's email addresses. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and send us an email, and we'd be happy to talk with you. Thanks, Mariah. I saw your, your comment there and I'm glad you found this helpful. Hopefully uh, see you on campus here later this year. So thanks for coming, everybody.